As we do every week, it's time to speak to one of the finest thinkers of his generation, the best-selling author of groundbreaking works, including The War on the West, The Strange Death of Europe, and The Madness of Crowds. Douglas Murray, we have a lot to discuss today, from the tyranny of the minority to sleeping beauty. But let's start with another Trump indictment, this time in Georgia. We have spoken in recent months about the dangers of the Justice Department becoming weaponized to attack a political candidate. And we've seen this in the justice system over and over again, what are considered by many to be bogus charges. And I think this week's developments help explain why only two in 10 Americans have a great deal of confidence in the US Justice Department. And among Republicans, Douglas, the figure is even less. That's right, Rita. I mean, it's a very, very dangerous corner for America, this, isn't it? I mean, I mean, the, the, the indictments against Trump are obviously, I mean, they're obviously sort of uh, coming one by one. There's a sort of drip feed of them. And I think the hope uh, of Trump's opponents in the Republican Party as well as in the Democrat Party is that they're going to just mount up. The irrespective of whether or not any one of them leads to actual prosecution, there's just going to be such a, um, a mountain of them uh, by the time the primary season really begins uh, that you know voters are just going to be turned off. But here's the, the complexity of that corner. Mm -hmm. A new poll out today shows Trump in even more of a lead in the Republican field than he's been to date. And so, so the question really is, like, why is there no impact uh, from these uh, mounting indictments? And I think it goes to what you've just said, Rita, that there is just such distrust, particularly among Republican voters, of the idea that justice in America today is actually blind. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, we saw that uh, early on with the very first indictment with the, those FBI raids over the, uh, the documents, uh, because at that time, DeSantis and Trump were neck and neck. And as soon as that occurred, Trump shot ahead and DeSantis is really uh, trailing him terribly. It's hard to yes. see how he's going to make up that ground. Now, let's remind folk of who the foreperson of that special grand jury in Georgia was. But honestly, I kind of wanted to subpoena the former president because I got to swear everybody in. Mm. And so I thought it'd be really cool to get 60 seconds with President Trump of me looking at him and being like, do you solemnly swear? And me getting to swear him in, I just, I kind of just thought that would be an awesome moment. Oh dear, that was Emily Kors, the uh, Georgia grand jury foreperson. Now, moving along to another presidential candidate, another outsider, Vivek Ramaswamy, who gave a masterclass in how to handle the LGBTQIA lobby. Here he is confronted by a pansexual reporter, Watch this interaction. I am personally a pansexual, so I was okay. just wondering what your views on same-sex couples were. I don't have a negative view of same-sex couples, but I do have a negative view of a tyranny of the minority. So, so I think that in the name of protecting against a tyranny of the majority, and there are times in this country's history where we have had a tyranny of the majority, we have now, in the name of protecting against tyranny of the majority, created a new tyranny of the minority. And I think that that's wrong. I don't think that somebody who's religious should be forced to officiate a wedding that they disagree with. I don't think somebody who is a woman who's worked really hard for her achievements should be forced to compete against a biological man in a swim competition. I don't think that somebody who's a woman that respects her bodily autonomy and dignity should be forced to change clothes in a locker room with a man. That's not freedom, that's oppression. And Douglas, he went on to explain why this tyranny of the minority is particularly dangerous for children. How did you see that uh, encounter? I thought it was fascinating, Rita. Firstly, because uh, this uh, per this uh, person says, woman saying, I'm a pansexual. She's is probably used to that making people bow down to her as a sort of <laughs> goddess Gaia-like figure. You know, oh, pansexual, oh, how interesting you must be. Oh, my. And, of course, she's also used to the fact that, that really saying that at the opening is a type of way to try to make the person who is your interlocutor into your hostage. I'm a pansexual. 
you know, what have you got to say about that? And you're, you're, she's hoping that the politicians are going to go, uh, 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 I can't believe you love everything, like, uh, want to have sex with trees, whatever, pansexuals have mean this week, uh, sure. Uh, they just hope that it's going to make them into a hostage. And Vivek Ramaswamy is far too clever for that. Uh, uh, I know him, I've done events with him, I've spoken with him. On many occasions, he's very smart. And what he did there was expert, in my opinion, expert in making sure he wasn't taken hostage by this clear political activist. Um, uh, secondly, by explaining the problem that he has, and, and basically the majority of us have with this w weird uh, alphabet soup clown car thing. Uh, and thirdly, by doing so in a courteous manner. It's something very interesting about Ramaswamy. He's thought his way through all of these issues. He's got a very clear way of explaining things. And as long as somebody is courteous to him, he's courteous back. Mm. And it's very interesting that somebody who's such an outsider when he started is now number three in the polls and catching up with DeSantis fast. It's astonishing how well he's done because as intelligent as he is, uh, uh, you think oh, he's got zero chance, but he's getting through and, and even that interaction ended on a lovely note with, with I think, the reporter. And by the way... God. And by the way, I should mention, uh, Rita, that when I was last on a stage with Vivek in, uh, in Washington early this year, I did say to him that I, I wanted the deal that I always ask of politicians, which is that if he does make it to president, I want a special portfolio in his government, which is Minister uh, of Education, Public Enlightenment and also War. <laughs> and War? <laughs> Not asking much, Douglas. Not asking I, much at all. I think it would add a certain. I think it would add a certain piquancy to my dealing with the teachers' unions. <laughs> I endorse this. I'm backing this a hundred percent.